Hi, my name is Sarita. And my name is Rena. We are both past patients with Mexico Bariatric Center, and we are here to break the stigma of having weight loss surgery in Tijuana, Mexico. We will be covering all things bariatric to help you get the most out of this weight loss journey. Hi, welcome to episode four. We will be talking about the post-op guidelines for phase three, four, and beyond. And beyond. So let's start with phase three. Okay. What is phase three? Phase three is going to be soft solids. And you will start phase three at 14 to 21 days. Mm -hmm. The goals for phase three, um, you need to start reading labels and yes. looking at serving sizes. So, so when you're doing that and you mm -hmm. don't really know what you're looking at, mm -hmm. that's what the nutritionist is for, right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So because when I started this journey, which I started reading labels years prior to bariatric mm -hmm. surgery, but I, people would say read labels, but mm -hmm. what did that mean to me? Like that was like mm -hmm. looking at Greek or just any foreign language. Right. I had no idea what that said. Right. So always reach out to the nutritionist, right? Right. And if you don't know. Right. And she can give you the correct guidelines as far as, you know, your protein, your fat, your carbs, your fiber, sugar. Um, you're not really going to um, keep really good track of that until phase four and beyond. Right. Right, right. now you're, you know, we're focusing on protein weighing your food but it's a good time to start learning good, what yes. to look for on those labels yeah and the it's serving really serving size is really important mm -hmm. because um obviously you don't want to you know overeat well yeah it would be really hard to but you right. don't want to force right you don't want to force yourself to eat too much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we're weighing our food weighing our food and what kind of how much food do we need at this phase so three, phase three so right now it's four to six ounces total. Okay. And I know sometimes you might not be able to get that much, but try and get in at least three ounces of protein. Always protein first. Mm -hmm. And you want to get at least 20 grams of protein per meal so you can meet the goal of 60 to 90 grams of protein a day. Yeah, right. that makes sense. And so when you're working on getting in these, this um, total six ounces, mm -hmm. it's really important to watch for signs of fullness. Yes. <clears throat> so what are signs of fullness for you? Signs of fullness for me were nose running, hiccups, and burping. Okay, okay. I feel like I have experienced a little bit of all that. Mm -hmm. I can't really pinpoint anything specific, so it's not like a... For sure, every time I'm full, this right. happens. Because it is like that for some people. Some right. people tell me, without a doubt, if right. their nose starts running, do not yeah. take another bite. Yeah, don't. Like, do just don't do it. <laughs> and I feel like that maybe that's happened once, but just I'm not even going to, like, claim that it has because mm -hmm. I can't recall that. I want to say that it has, and um, I just usually know that I'm full. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I just usually know. Maybe some uh, fullness. Just pressure. Pressure. Just a pressure that says, hey, yeah. I'm done. Hey, don't take another bite. Hey, don't do that. Else you're going to be sorry. Don't do that. Yeah, so that's always something to watch out for as you start eating more um, um, solid solid foods. You're going to see more restriction oh, in this phase. Definitely. Um, if you had like a, had the surgery, especially if you had like sleeve and you're, you're thinking, you know, I can drink all this liquid and I just don't feel like I, I have, yeah, I don't really, there's something wrong. I can get all this liquid in. Right. Is this, no, you're, 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 you had a perfect surgery. You're having right. a perfect recovery yes. and be thankful for that. Yes. Um, but this is the phase where you will likely start seeing some more restriction right. than you were with just liquids. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and it's important to chew 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 yes you want your chew to, you want your food to be really soft right like a uh, applesauce right right apple apple sauce sauce. consistency yeah i think you would chew it around 25 to 30 times each bite to get okay. into that consistency have you ever like chewed and actually thought about how many times you were chewing no me either <laughs> i just knew what applesauce <laughs> consistency was yeah i was thinking if it has chunks in it i need to keep chewing right yeah, yeah. 
But I was just kind of curious because I could just imagine like two months ago. No. I mean, you know. No. <laughs> um, a really uh, great way to start eating foods in this space is with tiny utensils. Tiny utensils. Tiny utensils and tiny dishes. So here we have a toddler, toddler spoon, toddler <laughs> fork, and um, we have a toddler bowl. Yes. And we have a toddler plate. Now, yes. I got these at Ikea. So, so yeah. I was cheap. I bought my toddler spoons at the Dollar Tree. Yeah. I just well, it's like the Dollar Twenty Five Tree. Now. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's like I don't. I want to say there was like a dozen, maybe, maybe yeah. ten, six. I don't know. There was more than. There was a handful, and a pack. Right. And they're tiny little plastic spoons, and I carry them everywhere I went. Mm -hmm. So like I would have yogurt. And I would use my spoon and rinse it off and chunk it back in my, my right. purse or my bag. Yeah. Um, or chunk it back in my car. I kept spoons in my at my desk. I kept spoons <clears> in my <throat> car. Mm -hmm. And I always use those little tiny spoons. And that's yeah. an easy way to make sure you're taking very small yes. bites. Very nice. um, to not get too full too right. fast. Right. You definitely do not want to take too big of a bite. You will be very sorry. And and if you're putting food in these tiny little bowls mm -hmm. instead of like a normal size bowl. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you feel like mentally you don't you get that sensation that you've had a meal right so it's visually a meal and it's it feels like a meal in your tummy mm -hmm. and it just it's just a good tip yeah and you, it's, it's a good tip. not like you're you know um, missing out on yeah. something it's you like, don't feel like you're just trying to fill up a whole big plate right like we're used to <laughs> right like we did before yes and we clean that plate yes. yeah yeah. And so, 30 minute rule. 30 minute rule. Mm -hmm. Always follow the 30 minute rule. And let's reiterate what is the 30 minute mm -hmm. rule? No drinking 30 minutes before you eat food or, or after. Or after. Yes. Don't, eat, don't even drink during your meal. No, don't drink. No, yes. Do not drink 30 minutes before yes. or after eating. This will be a lifetime thing. And it is most important here in this phase. So, in phase two, you should have waited 30 minutes before or after uh, those thick liquids, like right. before even a protein shake. Right. And that's, it's necessary for practice because in this phase, like we said, you're going to start feeling that restriction. Yes. But also, um, if you drink, you're going to, you're going to put liquid in your stomach and you're not going to have room for food. So you're not going to know, right, exactly right. what fills you up. Right. So that's true. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to try lots of new stuff here. So you're going to kind of get away from drinking a bunch of stuff and start mm -hmm. munching on some things. So yeah. it's important to try one thing at a time. Uh, we'll add one new food mm -hmm. at a time just to make sure you're able to tolerate it. And if you're not able to tolerate, go back later in recovery and try it again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your tummy is not ready for that particular food. So always go back and try so funny story can i say a funny story mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so one of my first um one of my very first soft uh solids was this bariatric recipe i found for a chicken avocado ranch mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. And so it, I didn't eat canned chicken really before surgery, so I don't know why I thought I should eat canned chicken after. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you can have canned chicken. We'll get to that. But right. I, you can have canned chicken. So this is like one of those things: one new food at a time. Well, if you try this salad thing that I made, that's I really tried three things at a time. Yeah. Right? And this was the only time, the only time after surgery that I got sick. Mm. The only time. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you what I did. So I got my can of chicken, I got my avocado, and it was it cost me like half a pack of ranch. Mm -hmm. But I thought, mm, oh, I missed the flavor, right? <gasps> we've had such bland food right. up to this point, you know. We're on like three weeks of completely bland everything, and so I thought, eh, I'm gonna dump the whole pack in, and I did, <laughs> and I ate that probably <laughs> the three or four bites that ate, I probably ate it entirely too fast and it, the <laughs> the flavor was just entirely too much. Even if you never had a surgery, you would not want to have eaten that. It was so bad. Okay. And I, that came up. Oh, That's the only thing I ever okay. lost after 
I have to do surgery because that was like one of the first things I tried oh. on, on phase three. Don't know why I did that. Mm, that, that, that was kind of not nice. a sound appealing at all. That, that was my fault. Mm -hmm. It was not. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. Um, so one thing, uh, moving moving on into um, the the do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts here. Yes. Um, what's another another don't for us? Here, here's a really big don't. Do not eat baby food. But why can't I eat baby food, Sarita? There is not enough nutrition in baby food for an adult. But it's already pureed. But it's already portion yeah, size. It, it's, it, there's not enough nutrition in baby food for right. an adult. These, okay. It's for babies. Okay. And there's a lot of sugar and there is. and there's a lot of salt and ingredients that you shouldn't have anymore. Right, you want natural. And you can make your own baby food out of real food, food and puree it and sure. pretend it's baby food. You know, a lot of people do that. Yes, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, but just don't buy commercial baby food and right. eat it. Yeah. yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing you will do is avoid food with seeds as they can get stuck on your staple line. Mm -hmm. So really wait a good four to six weeks before you do that. So that way it's fully healed, mm -hmm. the staple line. Um, another thing you will do on phase three is three meals per day, and you'll be down to one protein shake a day. Okay. So those are some guidelines for The meals are, are interesting here though, because like mm -hmm. a serving of cottage cheese could be a meal, right? Mm, I mean, it would be part of a meal. Part of a meal? Yeah, I okay. mean, you could add some fruit to it. I mean, you, you can add something to it to make it, you know. More wholesome. More, yeah, more, okay. more complete. Okay, so mm -hmm. we'll get into that too, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so also in this phase, um, specifically at 14 days, right. um, whether you're already in phase three or not, <clears throat> if you've extended your phase two, if you're having some nausea, some people do, and they need to extend mm -hmm. their phase two a little longer, that's right. perfectly fine. Um, that's why it's 14 to 21, right? Right, right. 14 um, to 21 days. So if you are um, experiencing that, that's fine, but either way, you should start your vitamins back <laughs> at 14 days. 14 days post-op? Yes. Um, with vitamins, uh, we addressed this prior to with medications, don't crush. Mm -hmm. Don't open capsules, um, right. take them as directed. Right, um, definitely. And then, so what kind of vitamins do we need? So we highly recommend the Emerge Vitamins. Who, by the way, sponsors this podcast. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, and the link to that website will be on our website. Yeah. Um, so yes, we highly recommend those. You can always reach out to your coordinator. Right, um, nutritionist. If you want to purchase Emerge, that Or nutritionist. Or the nutritionist. Yeah, of course the nutritionist. Or you can go directly to the website and yes. it's emergeberiatrics.com. Yeah, and order from and, there. And order from there. Yeah. They come in chewable, soft chew, they come in liquid, so you have a variety of choices. Awesome, awesome. And then, so, also, you want to start using things like supplements. People are like, oh, what about hair loss? So this is where you really want to kind of start um, upping your game, so to speak. You want to get your vitamins in. Um, I personally do collagen peptides. Mm -hmm. um, I use Vital Proteins. It's the blue jar. I mix mm -hmm. that in my morning protein shake still at this point, mm -hmm. over four years out. Right. Um, I still do have my morning protein shake, not because I need it. I just mm -hmm. really want it. Honestly, it's a habit, I yeah. guess. <laughs> oh, it's just how I like to start my day. But I do mix my protein. I do mix my collagen in it and take my vitamins mm -hmm. with that shake every day. It's just what I prefer. So... Um, with collagen peptides, though, you will see on the ingredients label, because you're going to start reading those labels, <coughs> you're going to see protein. Um, but collagen peptides are not considered, they should not be counted towards your total protein source of the day. Right. Um, because they are not a complete source of protein. Right, that is and true. And so do not count them um, towards your protein mm -hmm. for the day. Any of the protein in that, mm -hmm. if you do take that. Mm -hmm. And as far as um, vitamins, um, 
gastric sleeve patients will need to take vitamins mm -hmm. for at least two years. Yes. And for and um, also balloon. Balloon, you should take vitamins for at least two years. Right. Um, for sure, the first year we do recommend two years. You're also going to get those labs monitored every three months. Right. So, mm -hmm. if for um, after that first year, if you want to kind of start adjusting your mm -hmm. vitamins based on your labs, right. definitely work with your doctor right. and nutritionist about that, right. and you can adjust from there. Right, and but it'll be lifetime for DS patients, DS and and RY, RY bypass, yes, mm -hmm. or mini bypass. The mini Either bypass, 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 DS. Yeah, or DS patients. And, mm -hmm. you know, the thing, too, a lot, we don't talk about DS a lot, um, duodenal switch or duodenal switch. It's mm -hmm. said both ways. But um, those, it's very important to take your vitamins after that. It's very important to take your vitamins with any surgery. But if you are a DS patient, please take your vitamins because you have created the most malabsorption possible in your body and right. you need them right. you really really need very them. true yes all of us need them post-surgery but with mm -hmm. ds it's like ultimate level yes. of needing vitamins very important um so moving on from that if you want to talk about food we can talk about food okay. so some of the foods allowed on soft solids so we have eggs. Mm, so when you try eggs for the first time, they recommend that you do a fried egg or a poached egg. Sometimes the scrambled egg will not sit very well. Again, you can go back and revisit that later in recovery, mm -hmm. but again, they suggest poached or fried. Refried beans. Um, that was something I lived on for this whole thing. I love refried beans. I can actually mm -hmm. just get some from the Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Um, but also, you know what I did here? There, I don't, I don't know the recipe like really where it come from, but I have to tell everybody about this recipe because it's so good. Mm -hmm. And me and this recipe are close. We have a relationship <laughs> for a reason, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you that reason. Okay. So. If you Google refried bean soup bariatric, you gotta add that extra word on there. Okay. Um, it'll come up, it's actually on Pinterest. It uses mm -hmm. the Rosarita refried beans, mm -hmm. and then you'll know that's the right recipe if you okay. see that. Anyway, it's really on there. And if you really want the recipe, you can always contact us and I'll, I'll send it to you. But it's really delicious. And do you know why I love this recipe? No. Because <laughs> it allowed cheese and nuts to be friends oh, again. Oh, cheese. Yes. So that brings us to the next thing allowed on yes. this phase is cheese. Cheese. Cheeses. So yeah. you can eat, um, so, <laughs> so it says string cheese, right? It doesn't say that I could have like cheddar or anything. Do you know that I actually like shredded up my string cheese and put it oh. in my soup? Oh, that I would works. Do that because it said I could. It have works. It. It's low fat. It, yeah. So yeah. I did that. Okay. So I'm down with so, that. Yeah. Right. I do so that. she's and I started making up right here, mm -hmm. and we got to be friends again. And if you followed our podcast, you'll know that she's and I broke up for for pre-op. Yes. We we couldn't be friends. But we started making up right here. So this is why me okay. and this recipe kind of have like a thing. So cheese and I became friends again. You can do baby bell cheese, mm -hmm. string cheese, ricotta cheese, cottage cheese. Yes, all the cheese. All the cheese. Soft cheeses. There's a ricotta bake that's pretty popular. Yeah. For um, mm -hmm. post bariatric. Mm -hmm. I did try that. I kind of felt like it was good. Don't get me wrong, but it was a lot of work. I never tried it. For a it. tiny little bite. I've seen pictures, but I've never tried yeah, it. Yeah, it was a lot of work for a little bite because you only eat like a little yeah, bite. And then I don't really like leftovers. So for me, it was like, eh, what was the point in all that work? <laughs> so my family liked it. Yeah, I guess that was the point. Yeah. Yeah. And so tofu. Tofu and tofu. textured vegetable protein for those that are following a plant uh, based. Oh, plant based. Right. Um, so low bariatrics. Right. Yeah. Um, we have some meats you can try, shrimp, tuna, salmon, canned chicken. See, the shrimp thing just blows my mind. Yeah. Like, when I think about shrimp, I don't eat seafood, okay? So, I, I, I could be it. way off on this, mm -hmm. but when I think about shrimp, I think of, like, rubber. And it just mm -hmm. makes it hard for me to comprehend that going into, like, a phase three. Yeah, I don't eat But it's a fruit. So you can eat it if you like. You can yeah. try it. Remember, try one new thing at a time. One. If you don't tolerate, go back to it later. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so that really kind of concludes phase three. Yeah. Um, it's so. pretty simple. You're gonna just add in some soft foods, really. Right. And, um, and chew, chew, chew them up very well. Chew, make sure you're tracking. Don't forget to track. Right. Tracking is so important. And I'm gonna say that again, because we're going into phase four mm -hmm. and weighing food. And too. so weigh and track, weigh mm -hmm. and track. That's so important, oh, weighing okay. and tracking. And we have a, a scale here yes. that I use in my kitchen and um, it's a digital scale. Okay. Um, and this, I use it every day still to weigh my food and track my food. I got mine on Amazon. Um, this was from Weight Watchers okay. from a long time ago, okay. but it works great. So you can literally just hop on Amazon and search yeah. food, scale, food scale and you're gonna get one. They have them at Walmart too? Yeah, there you can Over get them in the anywhere. kitchen department? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I started tracking my food, weighing my food from the beginning. Um, and weighing mm -hmm. is, is really, really important. It's too. very important. Speaking of weighing food, moving on to phase four right. here. Yeah. Um, we're gonna start phase four at like 21 days. Right, 21 days. Or when you're comfortable, as long as you're meeting your goals right. in phase three. Right. Um, typically at that 21 day mark, three right. weeks out. Mm -hmm. um, so what are we weighing? What are we weighing for phase four? So what we're weighing for phase four is we, we want to get three ounces of protein two ounces of veggies and an ounce of healthy fat. So I usually do my protein here, veggies here, and then the very small one would be the fat. However, when I go to eat my food, I will eat the protein first. Mm -hmm. So you like the three compartment meal containers? I, I do, I, I think I got these on Amazon and okay. um, they work out great. They're great for meal prep, great for, you know, if you go to work, um, you know, great for travel. Yeah. So I use them every day. That's awesome. And so when you say weigh your food, mm -hmm. um, we didn't touch on this in phase three, but how do you weigh your food? So you weigh your food on a scale. So you got your scale. Where'd you get your scale? Weight Watchers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I bought mine on Amazon. Right. And you can literally get them anywhere. Okay. Walmart. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. So just search food scale and they come up and they're not expensive. I think mine was maybe 10 or 15 bucks. Yeah, or if it, maybe less, I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. easy, easy peasy. Okay, and so we're doing three ounces of protein, two mm -hmm. ounces of veggies, okay. one ounce, one ounce of healthy, healthy, fats. healthy fats, which are? So healthy fats could be things like um, avocado, mm -hmm. They could be like olives, they can be nuts. Yeah. I mean, there's so there's so many good healthy fats. An ounce is not very much though. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. Um, so. I like the little one ounce cups with the lids, mm -hmm. like in the little yeah. sauce containers yeah. at restaurants. You can get those anywhere really. Yeah, you can get those at the dollar store too. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're, they're always great to kind of go ahead mm -hmm. and portion out. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's volume. So we need to weigh right. one ounce. We need to weigh. So you would put weigh your out. cup on the scale and put yeah. an ounce well so, into that. So don't get that mixed up. The little right. one ounce cups or the little two ounce cups does not mean that that's two ounces of food. So you don't need that. Right. Right. That's, that's super important. That's another thing to... We're not using even, cups to measure food. We're using no. the scale. But usually, if you measure out one ounce of healthy fat, it mm -hmm. will fit in a little little right. one or two ounce cup. Right. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, with tracking. So important. Yes. I use Berry-tastic. I was using my fitness pal, but I like how um, Berry-tastic is more bariatric specific. Mm -hmm. um, I think you mentioned before on when we're talking about phase one and two, which one did you use? I used um, my plate. Yeah. No, but I had surgery again five and a half years ago, so I don't even know if it's an app anymore or it was one of the first ones, maybe. Yeah. Well, very. I love very fantastic. I yeah. just I recommend it to everybody. I just mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, it keeps up with all the details of what you ate. Right. It sends you alerts for um, drinking. I just really love that app. Um, so when we do eat um, our food, how like we should cut it in small like dime size? Yeah. Now we we're up to dime size pieces, yeah, so but chewing again to applesauce consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Always chew, chew, chew. Right. And again, again through the whole phase, like until you've reached the point where you've just ate everything, 
Um, always try one thing at a time. Right. right. Always. Because you never know that, that right. the new things might, um, right. you might not like them. Right. And that's it. Our taste buds change taste after buds surgery change. too. And there's things that we loved and then we don't like right. and things that we didn't like and we do. And you know, so try everything. Try everything. Right. Because I hated sweet pickles. I thought they were mm -hmm. disgusting. Okay. They're horrible. And now they're like the most delicious thing ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I loved dill pickles mm -hmm. and now they're gross. Yeah. I get the sour taste when I eat yeah. them. It's awful. So yeah, your taste buds change, try everything. You never know right. how it's going to affect you. So some don'ts for for this face. face okay, one. so avoid popcorn. Popcorn seeds can get stuck on your staple line and mm -hmm. they can also, they're slider food. They can cause you to gain weight. Slider food. What is a slider food? A slider food is something that goes down very easily. It's not protein. There is protein in some popcorn, but not enough it's for it not to fill you up. Yeah. yeah. So I had my own issue with popcorn. I ate too much popcorn and I did gain weight. And I had to stop eating popcorn because it was like, it went down so well. It tastes so good. No popcorn. Okay. Yeah, avoid no popcorn. popcorn. Mm -hmm. We do see people eat popcorn, but we do. you just have to have it, then right. do it in small quantities because yes. phase four and beyond is going to be about portion control. Right. So portion control. So mm -hmm. um, another thing too is you want to avoid alcohol. Some people think, oh, well, I'm drinking all this liquid, so I'm going to start having some alcohol again. No, don't do that. Don't do it. Phase four. Just, just don't. Um, you want to keep avoiding caffeine. Um, it is a, and um, it is acidic. And and you know decaf is also acidic. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend no coffee or decaf until at least you know. So you're past you're getting in all that liquid. You're getting in all yeah. liquid. Yeah. Right. I didn't start coffee until three months. Yeah. Post op. I I believe our um our goal should be 110 ounces of liquid a day, mm -hmm. and then you can start consuming um, that caffeine right. again. A cup of coffee. Yeah. Also mm -hmm. avoid avoid carbonated beverages. So this mm -hmm. is something else that's a little controversial. If mm -hmm. you want to do a Google on it, you're going to get lots of info, right. mixed reviews. In this phase, though, avoid carbonated beverages. Right. It's, um, it could be very uncomfortable. It could yes make you bloated, nauseous. I yes. mean, it's very. It could be very uncomfortable. Yes. And why would you want to risk that? Yeah, why would you? It's why not would worth you? it. No, you went, you've come it. this far. Right. Don't give it up. Don't give it up now for right. carbonated beverage. And then straws. Um, so we we touched on this in in phase two mm -hmm. as well. So with straws. Um, straws can um, cause trap to get cause air to get trapped in your stomach, right. and which could cause discomfort. Again, you don't know if that discomfort is from an issue, an underlying issue, right. or from the straw. So, right. if you're going to use a straw, just know this can happen. If you use the straw and you are getting discomfort, stop using the straw. Otherwise, um, really, once you reach about eight weeks, you're kind of it doesn't okay. really matter anymore. Okay, with the straw, use the straw. through these post-op post -op, um, guidelines and things like that. It is it is up to you, but <clears throat> just know it can cause discomfort. Um, so mm -hmm. then also, no chewing gum. No <laughs> chew gum. I know I tell a lot of you to chew gum when you're hangry on the pre-op diet, which is fine, but let's don't chew gum now. So why I'm chewing we, gum right now. <laughs> you are, but you're also five years post-op. Yes, so yes. in phase four, why are we not chewing gum? So gum can also cause you, you know, for it, for it to be uncomfortable in your stomach. And, mm -hmm. and you don't want to swallow your gum by mistake. It yeah. could get stuck it's on your staple line it. too. And we have had patients who have swallowed their gum. So yeah, yeah just don't, don't do just don't gum do yet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so vegetables, there's some vegetables that you should avoid. You will mm -hmm. start introducing vegetables. You should introduce them soft cooked. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to do raw or like salad yet. No. But um, what kind of vegetables should we avoid right now? So these are all mostly my favorites, but broccoli, cauliflower, oh, yes. cabbage, mm -hmm. 
Celery is not my favorite. Onions and then peas, are, that's my least favorite. Yeah. So the, these are considered gassy vegetables and they can cause you to have gas and be uncomfortable and bloated and just avoid them for now until you're further out in your recovery. Yeah, because I eat all of, I eat all of these things I, at this point. I do too, except yeah. peas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just yeah. not in this phase, right. not in phase four. Right. Um, and then, so another thing that you want to avoid um, as well, I want to just touch on this a little bit, is carbs. Right. Okay, there are good carbs, there are bad carbs. Mm -hmm. Can you never, ever, ever, ever again eat bread? That is not true. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. But I want to say this. If you are a DS patient, mm -hmm. um, carbs are going to make you bloated. Mm -hmm. If they don't, you're lucky because of all the DS patients I think I know, um, mm -hmm. carbs is a trigger for gas and bloating. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, it kind of helps because, you know, we're trying to lose weight, right? right. Yeah. And so, but yes, ca carbs will cause that. So if you are a DS patient um, and you are consuming carbs and you are feeling bloated, mm -hmm. you might want to look at what you're eating. Right. It's probably your carbs. Um, and for me, dairy. So I wasn't, mm -hmm. I didn't have dairy issues prior to surgery, but I am feeling a little like uh, maybe lactose these days. Um, I think that's, some patients do have yeah, that issue. I read that. Yeah. We'll do a whole nother episode on that. Yeah, we will. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that later. We'll, yes, we definitely. Yes. So let's get to the yummy stuff because uh, mm. foods, let's talk about foods. Um, notice that I, I do still love food. Like, mm. I'm not going to say I don't. I love I do. food. I'm a foodie. I love all yeah. kinds of food. Well, I wasn't, I was a foodie before, but even mm -hmm. before surgery, I ate small portions. Mm -hmm. So it's all about portions at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and I love food. We, um, actually had some really yummy stuff not too long ago in a restaurant, right? So we did meatloaf sliders. Yeah, we yeah. did. And you know, we ordered an appetizer and, and shared, shared it. it. And we each ate one slider and that was it. We were We full. ordered two appetizers. Right. That's, and we brought home leftovers. Right. Yes. Yeah, so we brought home most of it. That's like bonus of bariatric. Yeah. That's a bariatric bonus. Right. Um, we had leftovers yeah. from appetizers. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so get into food. Meats. Serena, what kind of meats can we eat? How should we so, eat meats? What so, should we do with meat? So meat should be very moist when it's cooked. So mm -hmm. you would start with more of a dark meat, uh, chicken. Usually if you can tolerate that, you're not going to have a problem with other types of meat. Um, so, you know, if you can tolerate that, then try some more lean meats and make sure they're very moist mm -hmm. when cooked. Yeah. So don't dry out your chicken. Right. Yeah, don't, don't dry, don't out, dry your out your beef. Right. Some people have a harder time eating beef. Um, they do. When they start reintroducing right. meat. Again, revisit it later if yes. you can't tolerate it now. Right. Um, try it later in your recovery mm -hmm. because your tummy might not be ready. And and then going back to my best friend, mm -hmm. um, cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, at this yes. point I got to make up with all the other cheeses oh. because now you can start eating all, all the cheese. other cheeses. Um, before we talked about softer cheeses, and at this point, you can just start kind of all cheese um, introducing all cheese, mm -hmm. but keep cheese in moderation because mm -hmm. keep in mind cheese is a saturated fat. Uh, it's very high in saturated it's fat. It's very high in saturated fat. And insulin resistance is a thing if you have mm -hmm. too much saturated fat in your mm -hmm. diet, that can happen. Yeah, and you just want to limit it. Yes. Limit your cheese. Limit. But you can have it. You can right. definitely have it. Um, and beans, so we've had refried beans at this point. Right. Um, and now we can do like lentils right. and kidney beans and black beans mm -hmm. and um, what are some other beans that you can think of? Well, pinto beans. Pinto beans. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, beans are very good. They're, they're easy on the stomach, aren't they? Right, they are. And they're high protein. They do have carbs, but they're good carbs. And they do make you gassy, though. They do make you gassy. Up. So there's pros and cons to beans, yeah. but they're you so know, good for you. Yeah, if you're doing a plant-based diet, beans are great. Yeah, Lentils, beans are great. different beans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we talked about the soft-cooked vegetables. Right. Just make sure they're soft-cooked. Um, fruits, um, recommended to do like canned fruit first, right? Right, you want to do canned fruit. Um, usually it's pretty soft and it's in like its own juice or water. Preferably it's mm -hmm. in water, not its own juice. Yeah. And, um, you know, try that and see how that 
you know, it works for you. Um, it, it's sulfur. Right, Watermelon. Sulfur. Watermelon, watermelon, watermelon is mostly water. Watermelon is water, so but be careful with the seeds. Be careful with the seeds. Mm -hmm. um, even seedless watermelons do tend to have seeds. seeds. Um, but watermelon, I've actually seen a lot of people use watermelon at this phase to mm -hmm. help with hydration. Right. Um, so you can do that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, can I tell you something that's funny? Mm -hmm. You know what it says on our pre-op diet? I mean, our post-op diet in this phase? Mm -hmm. It says not to eat citrus skins. That's weird. Who's gonna so, eat orange peels? I mean, listen, <laughs> I'm not making fun of anybody who eats citrus skins. I'm just saying, I'm not aware of this. Mm, well, you know, people do um, use the, the a peel zest. a zest, like on it's so certain small. food. It, but it would still, might, it might irritate The you. acid in it, maybe. It could be that. I don't know, if anybody has any info on eating citrus skins, skins um, let me know. I'd really like some feedback on I that. Too. I don't know what citrus skins are, mm -hmm. but I mean, other than, I guess my brain goes straight to lemon and orange pills. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's something else. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Did is. you think that's comical? Yeah, it's kind of weird. I think it's comical. Um, anyway, so also in this phase, there's a couple of things you want to watch for as you're introducing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you have had an arm lie, um, sugar is something that you really want to avoid because eating sugar after having RY, it will not guarantee do this because we have had someone who was upset that they didn't get dumping syndrome right. from RY. They actually wanted it because they thought that would stop them from eating bad yes, food, but they didn't get it. So, and that's a funny, not a funny story, but it's a story that our, um, surgeon liaison, liaison tells us. Um, and so anyway, the, if you did have RMY, please be careful with sugar. Um, you can get dumping syndrome after VSG. It's very uncommon. I had it one time. She did. I did. I had coffee creamer at three months. It's liquid coffee creamer. Mm -hmm. And immediately, well not immediately, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, experienced dumping. Yeah. And what did it feel like? Death. <laughs> I felt like Sorry. breath. I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> it was horrible. You do not ever want to go through this. <laughs> okay, so dumping syndrome um, from a medical perspective, or my understanding of it from a medical perspective, is that when you have RNY, you have a stoma, which is like a little egg-shaped pouch instead of like the banana sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, so stomach um, breaks down sugar. That's how sugar is broken down by churning in the stomach. So with a stoma, your food doesn't stay in long enough to churn and break down. So it essentially goes straight through you into your intestines. Mm -hmm. And so what happens with dumping syndrome is that your sugar reaches the intestines and your intestines say, oh, wait, what is this? We're getting rid of it. And then they just completely dump your system because they don't know what to do with the sugar. Right. So they dump it. And so for you to have it with a gastric sleeve makes sense because it was a liquid. Right. And so liquid would pass through right. faster before your stomach had a chance to kind of break it yeah. all down. Mm -hmm. So that make that makes sense. Yeah. But essentially that's what it is. And so dumping syndrome is something you want to look out for. You want to be proactive, not reactive on that because um, being proactive <laughs> with it means definitely watching the sugar so yes. again reading labels making sure you're not consuming a lot of sugar um because what dumping f so <laughs> to break down what death means um it's like hot flashes it's diarrhea yeah, heart it's racing heart racing sweating it's, yeah, it's, um, oh that's hot flashes yeah, yeah yeah but um anyway so it really feels like uh a, i've had people describe it to me as a stomach bug on steroids yeah, and it can last yeah. a while. It, it, yeah, it can. A couple hours. It could. Yeah. There's there's the short dumping and the long dumping. Yeah. yeah. But I think the long one takes longer for it to happen and mm -hmm. it lasts longer. Yeah, I don't know a lot about that. Yeah, I've read about it. If you avoid sugar after RY, you are going to be doing well on avoiding this. And you definitely do not want to be away from home when this happens no. because that would be very bad. Don't have an R and one and then decide to have dessert at a restaurant. Right. Or a birthday party. Yeah. Don't no. have that. Don't no. have that cake. And and you know, we talk about sugar and we talk about food, but let's be real, sugar is liquids. 
Mm -hmm. um, don't have that fruit juice. Don't have that mm -hmm. soda. Don't, um, because all those things are loaded in sugar. And calories. And calories, mm -hmm. and calories. So, um, and another thing to watch out for in this phase is just discomfort. Just pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. Um, pay attention to how, what triggers you to say I'm full, right? You know, does your nose run? Do you start burping? Hiccups. Um, hiccups. Do you get the hiccups? Mm -hmm. Do you just feel that pressure mm -hmm. that says, hey, that's enough. Don't take that extra bite. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Don't I do mean, it. if you need to learn the lesson, go for mm -hmm. it. But we try to warn you. Try not to do it. Mm -hmm. We try to warn you. Um, and then... Just what did you eat? If you're feeling some discomfort, what did you eat? You know, going back to carbs and DS. I learned that on my own before I even knew that DS patients experienced that. I was like, I had no you know, idea. every time I eat some type of carbs, mm -hmm. this happens. And I just kind of picked up on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started researching it and, and checking all the groups and everything. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, yeah, this is very common. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely just pay attention to your body. Your body right. will tell you. Right. Um, you know your body. Yeah, your stomach's going to talk a lot. Yeah, it does talk. Mine still talks. Mine still talks. <laughs> I'm like, what My sleeve is like four years old. What is this noise years? coming it's from? Yes. It's probably talking to us right now. Um, but it just talks. Don't let that be alarming. We, we probably should have mentioned that in the first yeah. and fixed one. But um, your stomach is going to talk. And especially as you're trying new things, it's just, it makes lots of noise. So be prepared if you're at someone's house or you're out to eat, you might start talking. Yeah, just rumbling like you're hungry, yeah. but you just <laughs> ate. <laughs> um, because that that happens, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Don't think something's broken. No. Um, and just watch, like I said, just watch your body, pay attention. Mm -hmm. And then Sarita already touched on meal prep. Mm -hmm. Um but I don't meal prep because I don't like leftovers. I love leftovers. She's a meal prepper. <laughs> Total meal prepper. Yes. I feel like I could go up in your refrigerator and eat one of your meals right now. Right, I have I have meal prepped <laughs> meals already in my fridge, but I do meal prep on the weekends for the week because I like to know what I'm eating during the week mm -hmm. and it's already weighed out. I got my protein, my vegetables. Mm -hmm. I know what's happening for the week. I imagine that it makes life easier for you it does because like me i'm working i'm working i'm working mm -hmm. and i have to eat and it's like right. so i'll take a few minutes and i'll run grab something to eat and then i'll come back to work and i'll work and eat and mm -hmm. and um it would be easier if i had that meal already made but See? i just can't i would just pop this behind so, me in the microwave for it. one minute and I'm here's scared. my meal i go to eat it and i'm just mm -hmm. like Ugh. i love leftovers i don't know maybe there are some things i like leftovers there really is some things, mm -hmm. but not right. me. Not so, enough to meal prep. You know, at five and a half years post-op, I mean, I, I do follow the guidelines still yeah, because I, I want to, um, you know, maintain my weight loss. Yeah, same. I mean, I can literally eat anything on the planet that I wanted to eat. Me it may too. not agree with me. Me too. But I'm capable. Right. You know, um, it may not agree with me and I may gain some weight if I decide to go out and eat cheesecake all day, but... Right. Hey, I could do it. Right. So, and you'll get there too. If you're yes. in this phase, you'll get there too. Um, just way. I always say way, way, way. Because if you mm -hmm. think you're eating three ounces of food, mm -hmm. um, what happens is your eyeballs grow. Three ounces is not that much. It's not. And you know, if you think mm -hmm. you're eating three ounce, three to four ounces of meat, Next thing you know, you're three or four ounces, like you're a year or two years out. It's eight ounces. It's turned into <laughs> like, well, yeah, at least six, right? Yeah. That happened to me, and I was like, oh, I need to weigh my food again. Right. Up. And I was like, wow, I'm eating. No wonder I'm full. Yeah. Sometimes so I full. look at it and I'm like, that's got to be more than that. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be more food in there than three. Yeah. And, you know, even at four years out, yes, I didn't have a revision. I honestly don't think my stomach got tightened, though. I don't think it needed it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to go back and look at my report, but I don't recall it. Mm -hmm. um, but even still, and Sarita still eats like me. Like, we both eat tiny mm -hmm. portions. And I still have restriction. Yes. I, I can still feel that restriction yes. after five and a half years. Yeah, so keep tracking, keep tracking, keep weighing. Mm -hmm. um, in in this phase, you're going to start running, especially at this 21 days. Mm -hmm. um, people say, oh, no, I've started eating food, and now I'm not losing weight. You're going to hit a stall. It's right. going to happen. Stalls are important. Right. Um, stalls need to happen. It's good for your body. Right. Your body has to catch 
up yes. to everything that's happened and just yes. and you just keep doing what you're doing and trust the process don't eat less because that is not, not what you that's not what you need to do mm -hmm. it's not going to help you just keep doing what you're doing following the guidelines and it will happen again and you check your measurements you'll you sometimes lose inches mm -hmm. if the scale's well, not moving the, right. the tape measure usually is right, right. and then all yeah. of a sudden you'll start seeing the movement it, on the scale and if it really stresses you out in a stall just stay away from the scale just right stay away don't weigh yourself just don't do it I, I personally weigh every day i weigh every day but it's highly advised against to do that sometimes twice a day yeah, me too. <laughs> well, because I weigh myself and my trainer weighs me at night, so. Okay. Yeah, so twice a day. Okay. And so, another thing here is, uh, we touched on it a little bit before, so we're going into the beyond right now, and mm -hmm. in the beyond, um, alcohol, we'll have a whole another episode about things like this, but mm -hmm. um, if you just want to consume alcohol, please wait till at least after eight weeks. Mm -hmm. I personally don't recommend doing it, um in mixed company no if you have to try alcohol do it um maybe with a trusted mm -hmm. spouse sister mother friend mm -hmm. something that somebody you trust just to see yes. how you react to it some people it doesn't affect them mm -hmm. some people it, you may get really drunk really fast but then it won't last very long right um, and alcohol can be a slippery slope it is. um you know there's that transfer Calories. Addiction, mm -hmm. calories, weight gain. I mean, we're going to do an episode just on that um, in the future. Yeah, but really try to stay away from it. If you mm -hmm. just have to do it, please wait at least eight weeks right. post-op. That is what's medically advised. Um, <clears throat> and again, watch your calories with liquids. Mm -hmm. um, we talk a lot about food. We pay attention to food. We're tracking food. We're weighing food. Watch those liquids too. Watch what you're drinking. Um, people start drinking even juice. They think, oh, juice is healthy. Juice is loaded with juice calories and sugar. Loaded. Water is healthy. Water is healthy. Add flavoring to your water, but mm -hmm. water is healthy. People start back on carbonated drinks. Mm, no. Um, and while the carbonation may not bother you, it, that's okay. If you can handle it and you're... We're talking way beyond, you know, we're talking months out, but mm -hmm. um, if you can handle it, that's fine. I, I do, I mean, I drink some carbonated drinks every once in a while. It's like the zero sugar I have not stuff. had any carbonation probably 15 years. I can't drink it out of a bottle or a can. Yeah. Like, but it was never something I, you yeah. know, always had to have. Right? It's a port and a cup and a shake it. So it's not yeah. really carbonated by the time right. I'm drinking. shaking it out. I really <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, also just watch that because the number one leading cause of regain is um, consumption of liquid calories. Mm -hmm. And people, patients will say, oh, I'm getting all my liquids in, but you don't know what kind of liquids. And then all of a sudden they're gaining weight. So mm -hmm. be really mindful of the liquids that you are consuming, like Rena said, because that can lead to weight gain. Yeah, that's, you know, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I don't really highly recommend doing the um, apple juice, the wheat and apple juice in the beginning. Right. It's an option, but it's something you should phase out quickly. Right. You Absolutely. should phase that out pretty quickly because mm -hmm. that's a lot of sugar in yeah. apple juice. Even it, it the is. no sugar added. Right. Is a lot of sugar. Right. Um, and then carbs. Uh, we'll touch on that in the future as well, but there are good carbs, there are bad carbs. Um, don't think that you will never, ever, ever again in your life eat carbs, bad carbs, um, breads, pastas. Right. It's possible. There's lots of pasta alternatives if you need. Yeah, pasta. There, there's high protein pasta, chickpea pasta, mm -hmm. zucchini. Um, they zoodles. have yeah, zoodles. zoodles. They have um, you know bread, Ezekiel bread. That's oh. very. That's what I eat. Very oh, high in protein. Like bread. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. high in protein, and it's good carbs. You need carbs. And so a lot of people ask. So if you're this far out. What is a meal to you? So you said Ezekiel bread. I'm going to give you an example of what a meal is to me. Mm -hmm. um, I can eat a one scrambled egg mm -hmm. with half, just a cut in half, mm -hmm. of an Ezekiel mm -hmm. um, McMuffin, like an Ezekiel okay. English muffin okay. um, piece. And that is a meal. Right. I, that, I get full on that. Right. So I can take a piece of Ezekiel bread, the sesame, some mm -hmm. green package, toast it, 
and put a piece of cheese and a piece of turkey from the deli oh, that um, and fold it over and make a sandwich. And that's a really high protein, good carb snack to eat before I do strength training. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's it, really nice. Very, very good. Yeah. So, so um, see if you continue to maintain watching mm -hmm. what you eat and weighing out your food, you will be five years post-op eating a half a sandwich too. Right? <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Living off, <laughs> living off half a sandwich. Half yeah. an egg, egg muffin. Right. You know. Yeah. So, um, well, that is going to conclude our... Episode four. Episode four. Episode four. Phase three and four of the post-op guidelines. Yeah. So anyway, you can find all of this post-op information on our website. Yes. You can also always contact the nutritionist yes. um, for any additional information. And if you have any questions, um, just reach out. We'll be glad yeah. to help. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Bye -bye. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or want to share your bariatric weight loss journey, you can call or text us at 480-999-4826 or send an email to podcast at mexicobariatriccenter.com. You can also follow Mexico Bariatric Center on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Keep in mind, these are the opinions of the host. The views represented do not reflect or define the values of Mexico Bariatric Center. This podcast is sponsored by Emerge Bariatrics and Mexico Bariatric Center. Please visit MexicoBariatricCenter.com for more information.